Makassa Beach in False Bay, Cape Town is a very popular fishing area. Still one of the few beaches, because of a whole bunch of gravel in the back, a section to drive to the area you want to fish. Also keep in mind that these areas aren't very safe. Make sure there's a couple of you and a lot of other anglers when you fish Makassa Beach. Hi everyone, I'm here with Brian Rademeyer, one of the other ambassadors. He's going to show me how to fish Makassa today. Um, well known for this area. This is his backyard. Brian, what are we catching today? Yeah, we're going to talk some couple of yos. I'm carving some Blu rays. Uh, we literally just had first cast, we had a beautiful Blu ray on, and we got him out. So I'll, I've got some pictures of that. I'll show you guys later on. So, yeah, the water's nice and warm, the wind died out beautifully. So, uh, I think we, we should have a good day. Uh, some cop around yesterday. So uh, yeah, let's hope uh, we can show you guys some fish, eh? Yeah, no, what, what bait are we going to use to uh, target these carp today? Uh, mostly, mostly chocker. If we get some liveys in the water, then yeah, we'll put on some liveys as well. But we're going to start with chocker and then some uh, sardine for the Blu-rays. And yeah, the water's nice and dirty, which is good. For change, we've got some good color. So I think we're going to have some, some flat fish around, some, some carpies as well. Yeah. Okay, let's go and catch them. All right, have a sip. Today Emil and Rian started earlier looking for some good catches and Jacques Malarba will join them a bit later. I would like to introduce you guys to Jacques Malarbe, he's one of our ASFN ambassadors here in the Cape and he's joining us today. Jacques, what are you targeting and what bait are you throwing? Morning guys, um, at this stage we're targeting whatever's biting. Um, predominantly cob um, and maybe a Blu-ray, all depends. Uh, the bait I'm using this morning is a, is a choco and anchovy bait. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens. Targeting cob is a favourite under many anglers in the Western Cape. Now west of Agulhas, on the square tail cob you're allowed to keep five per person per day and east of Agulhas only one. These species are considered as overfished and vulnerable and all anglers are encouraged to rather limit your catch instead of catching your limit. Nothing better than releasing these beautiful fish. The size limit is 50 centimeters minimum. The day started off with a few smaller cob and continued throughout. target species, Makassa is one of those spots you definitely have to wade most of the time. To get your bait in the right gullies or on the right bank or behind the right bank takes a bit of effort sometimes. These areas are lovely to practice some water reading and finding structure that produce more fish. So continuously moving your bait and trying different areas is a must. Unfortunately, there was a technical issue with the sound and Emil is demonstrating the clips as you can find at Yakita Bait and Tackle that they use in the Cape to rig their live bait mullet. First the cable tie will go through the eye sockets, not through the eyes, just the sockets. 
Then add the ring clip, which has got an other end with some shrink wrap on that will keep it sturdy on the hook. Pull the cable tie down to the snoot of the mullet, but not too tight, so it hangs nice and loose, allowing more movement for the fish as well as breathing abilities, thus staying alive longer. Clip the excess cable tie off and remember to pick it up and dispose of it. Then secure your circle hook through the ring and the shrink wrap. There's a very small chance of this mullet coming off, so you can have a good cast and get it where you want it. It didn't take long for Emil to go tight. A live mullet is definitely one of the favoured baits on Makassar and this whole Western Cape area. Most of you probably already know Buta Rademeyer, our youngest ambassador. And even though he forgot his bucket at home today, he still wanted to get a bit of the action. First decent fish of the morning is a cow shark, meaning that the water is on the colder side, as these fish prefer cold water before they move inshore and in casting distance. They might look placid and friendly, but be very careful of these fish. They have got the ability to bite their own tail off. So when dragging them, take care and be very careful of that head and nasty teeth swinging around. Some guys have had the bad luck of those teeth landing straight into their bum and taking a chunk out while they were dragging this shark. After tagging it and quickly taking the measurement, she was released safely to swim away and fight another day. When releasing these fish, it's important to drag them when there's water under them. This taking a lot of strain and pressure off the spine. And when in deep enough water, swing it around head first to go out with the water, which just assists the shark to swim out easier. Uh, just two strips of chocker, beaten quite profusely as you can see. I'm just basically wrapping it around to cover the, the dingo. And yeah, it's still a cotton. There we go. Don't, uh, I'll, I'll tighten it at the bottom over there. I'll tie it up quite hard at the bottom and then softer in the middle to keep the bait as soft as possible in the middle and then just lock it tight on top again. Yeah, the second strip, as you can see, it's beaten quite lacquer. And yeah, you just uh, just wrap it around. Look what I've got Thank you very much for coming. Always very important to keep your circle look as clear as possible. That'll do. That'll do. Bye. Now, try to get it in as deep as possible. That's it. After the first cow shark, the bigger baits came out with Rian quickly putting one out. Shy sharks or donuts as we refer to them, are very common, especially in the Western Cape area, and normally a part of everyday catches. It is believed and said by many that when you find a hole or a side of a bank and you're catching quite a few of these shy sharks, it's only a matter of time and you'll get some cob, as they feed in the same areas and conditions.
Rian quickly jumped in to help one of the other drone anglers on the beach to land a bronze whaler he hooked. These anglers were actually targeting cop, and every now and again they often get picked up by the bronze whaler sharks, but every now and again that hook sits and they don't get bitten off. Now these are the species that draws most of the sport anglers to Makassar. It's over the summer months, they are in abundance and great fun to catch. Packing some real power in the fights and fish has been taken up to 200 kilos. Once catching a few of them, you can only but love them. They are feisty fighters and absolutely beautiful specimens. And definitely the best part is watching them swim away. Emil persisted on the live mullet that opens it up to a nice sized cob, cow shark, bronze whaler or anything that will pick up a live bait. Whilst Rian opted for a nice big bloody bait that will lure in a good sized shark. Now as you guys know ASFN has been supported by Atkin Marine for many years but don't have a branch in Cape Town. So we want to thank Agio Baits for supporting the ASFN ambassadors in the Western Cape making sure they have the freshest bait. Emil managed to get a better sized cob on a chocker dangle bait adding to the bouquet of catches they've had today. Netting mullet is part of every serious sports angler in the Western Cape's fishing bay. And when seeing it, I really miss the Western Cape fishing. There's no easy task. You have to wade in and really commit yourself to go and find some mullet. And the best way to look for them is looking for the yellow foam drifting on the surface as the mullet hangs around under this. pushed in, everyone switched to bigger baits. It's now it's bronze whaler time or maybe some bigger cow sharks. On the side the guys still kept their cob rods in. This is a norm, <laughs> having your cob rod on the side while fishing for the bigger fish. Rian went tight on a really good fish.
Andy Mule nearly lost a rod there, but Jock came to the rescue. Unfortunately, the hook didn't set. Maybe the drag was a little tight. turn again, looking like a really good fish, and Buta coming forward with a typical fast popper, and even though he left his bucket at home, was very keen to fight this fish. Buta did a really great job in landing this prize cow shark or seven gill shark. Look at that, Dad. That's taller than me. And again, Jacques making sure this fish swims away safely. Uh, so, uh, uh, it is likely just a lander cow of 179 centimeters, that's close to 80 kilos. Uh, so that was an unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable fight. Uh, you know, basically on lock drag, so I think you'll see on the video, uh, it took a bit of a hiding, but it was actually a very good fight. It's a big, big female cow, and uh, you know, tag is safe and released. That was on a, Yellow tail heels there, they are yellow tail heels. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's going to be Stevie for quite a long time. So, well done with that. That's it. <laughs> Another cobby that fell for Jacques' little chocker bait. And as he released it, a big boy picked up his other rock. This fish made its way to the surface way in the back already, and they could clearly see it was a bronze whaler shark. After over 20 minutes tussle, the line parted and could have been anything that swam into it. At about 4 o'clock, both Emil and Rian had to leave, but Jog persisted to see if they can get one of those bigger fish on the line again. And at 
wasn't long, the bronzes has moved in, and for Jacques it was to buckle to the beat. This time around, the hook pulled. Unfortunate for Jacques, but it doesn't mean stop trying. Jacques day today. Bronze is three, Jacques zero. Those days do come along. Thank you to everyone for watching and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet please do so and hit that bell notification button to receive a notification every time we upload a new video. Also like the videos as this really helps us. From Cape Town, thank you and see you again.